There are two pockets on the back side of my trousers. One is empty, and the other, also empty. So when I finished slurping noodles at the roadside stall, and the stall owner asked me if I wanted to pay by cash or card, I scratched my head and said, can I wash dishes instead? Seeing that the stall owner was about to get violent, I quickly took out my last $10 to give to her. I was really too poor. I needed money, badly needed it, so I directly kidnapped the little princess of a real estate conglomerate, intending to extort her father ruthlessly. At first, I found it unbelievable and clapped the newspaper against her, staring into her eyes, are you really Willow? It says here you're only 15. You've developed so well. These long legs of 1 meter 75, these ABS that were vaguely visible under the white clothes. How could she be underage? Her hands were tied behind the chair, seemingly speechless. Dude, what year is that newspaper from? I quickly flipped to the publication date. Oh, it's from 2018. No wonder. It even smelled old. I quickly calculated on my fingers. So you're 20 this year. She glanced at me, her tone unclear. I'm 19, not yet 20. Oh, still a child. I realized and nodded. Then I was reminded of the original intention of my trip, picked up the fruit knife and made a fierce gesture at her. You know I'm a kidnapper, right? Give me your dad's phone number quickly, or I will chop you. The corners of Willow's mouth tightened, and after a long time, she finally asked, Do you want a ransom? I slapped her thigh hard. Kids should mind their own business. She reluctantly muttered, I'm not a kid, I'm an adult. I don't care if you're little or not, I'm in a hurry to get things done. Under my impatient urging, she finally reluctantly recited a series of numbers. I dialed the treasured number, only to hear a cold mechanical sound beep dash beep dot dot how could this old man hang up on me? Seeing me with my phone, looking constipated, Willow couldn't help but laugh, my dad doesn't answer calls from strangers, I instantly glared at her. You should have said that earlier, give me your phone. Willow looked at me uncomfortably, then backed down at herself, how am I supposed to give it to you? I looked down and saw I had tied both her hands, so she indeed had limited movement, so I simply did it myself. I reached into her pocket, searched, searched, and got nothing. I looked at Willow confusedly. Why can't I get it out? Willow's face, at some point, had turned red from her ears all the way to her neck. Her voice was low and hoarse. You're getting the wrong one, brother. Making a phone call is really not easy. After finally getting Willow's phone out, I browsed her contacts and directly dialed her father's number. After the call went through, the other side seemed very surprised. Willow, how come you decided to call daddy? I felt somewhat embarrassed. I'm not Willow. The old man's voice immediately changed. Aha, uh -huh. then are you Willow's boyfriend? I felt even more embarrassed. No. Willow next to me started laughing again. I was a bit exasperated. I am a dignified kidnapper. How can I have no charisma? So I cleared my throat, fiercely said. Old man, listen carefully, I'm not Willow, I'm a kidnapper, he seemed a bit busy and not very interested in dealing with me, what kind of boring game is this again, get lost, I imitated what I had seen on TV don't believe me, then let me send you your daughter's fingernail first, I finished speaking and threatened Willow with my eyes, she seemed somewhat reluctant, but still cooperated and whimpered a few times to show that she was very afraid, I immediately followed up, did you hear that, Send the ransom quickly, or I'll tear the ticket. There was silence on the other end for a moment, followed by a roar. Fuck. I didn't expect him to say this, was stunned for a moment, and unconsciously looked back at Willow. Beautiful eyebrows, thin waist, long legs. Although it sounds a bit weird, this condition is quite a good deal for me. I smacked my lips and agreed without hesitation. Okay. Willow slowly looked up at me incredulously. I immediately hung up the phone and strode towards her. She watched me start to rip her clothes, her voice slightly trembling. You. What are you doing? I sighed heavily, very helplessly. You heard it too. This is your father's request. Willow's expression fell into a daze as if she was thinking. I couldn't be bothered with her, just holding on tightly to her white tee. Don't worry. I'm just after money. Once the task is completed, I won't hurt you. Willow's lips tightened. R. You sure? I nodded like pounding garlic. Of course I'm sure. She moved her shoulders, amusement in her eyes, frankly opened her shoulders, presenting a you can help yourself look. That's good. I nodded in satisfaction, just about to continue exploring her. When the phone next to us rang, 
It was Willow's dad roaring. Not only do you kidnap her, but you also want to do something indescribable to my handsome and compelling daughter. Dastard. I felt wronged. Wasn't that your suggestion? Her dad sounds like he wants to punch me through the phone. Hearing anything from a heartless person sounds dirty. Fine. How much money do you want? Name your price. I felt I was being scolded, silently looked at Willow. Try. Ow. 600,000. I feel like this number seems more lucky. Father and daughter exclaimed, in unison, 600,000. Their tone sounded full of disbelief, which made me a bit guilty. Ah, 50,000 is fine too. Again, to seconds of silence, I added weakly, it can't be less. Willow looked at me with a wounded expression, so in your heart I'm only worth this much. Manuel seemed a bit anxious. No, are you looking down on my Manuel's capabilities? Oh right, the newspaper said his name was Manuel. The head of a real estate conglomerate, a big tycoon with assets exceeding hundreds of millions. I think for a bit, sincerely asked. So Manuel bro, how much do you think is appropriate? He boldly and passionately said, at least, then suddenly seemed to remember something, quieted down. A dot just 50,000 then, give me your bank account number. I quietly rolled my eyes, this old man of this age, how can he pretend to be ostentatious, but not want to spend the money? After I sent him my bank account number in a text message, I quickly received a reply. Which bank? I was confused, but honestly answered. None of them were quite good. I'm asking you which bank? Oh, Lotus Village Rural Credit Cooperative. After arranging everything, I quietly sat on the small stool waiting for the notification of the transferred money. Suddenly, Willow spoke. Aren't you afraid that the bank card will expose your information? I instantly felt like someone had hit me in the head with a stick and come to my senses. Oh right, the bank card is linked to my own my D card. Isn't this just kidnapping under my real name? Manuel will definitely trace the information from the bank can call the police, catching me directly. I nervously grabbed Willow. So dot what should I do then? She glanced at me in dismay. However, considering my dad's IQ, before she could finish, the phone rang again. The incoming number was Manuel's. Willow and I looked at each other, somewhat afraid to answer the call. According to Manuel's capabilities, he must have already locked onto my identity. So, what's the difference between this call and the death curse call in the horror movie? The Willow signaled me with her eyes to take it. Her eyes were clear, making people inexplicably at ease. Driven by some unknown force, I pressed the answer button. Manuel's swearing voice came from the other side of the line. What kind of bank car is this? It keeps telling me there's a transfer limit. I've tried so many times, but it won't go through. I slapped my face in frustration. Oh no, this is a class to card which the school gave for scholarships. It has a limit of 10,000. Manuel sounded dizzy. So what do we do now? Do you have any other cards? I shook my head. No, I don't have any money to save. Manuel and I were both anxious. Willow, on the other hand, sighed and looked quite speechless. After a while, seeing me pacing back and forth in the room, she slowly said, actually, I have a solution. My eyes lit up. What? Transfer 10,000 to you each day until the total amount is reached. I was very surprised. No wonder they say she's a wealthy second generation. Her brain really works better than mine. I immediately told Manuel about this method, but he hesitated. What about my daughter? Does she have to stay outside all the time? I was not very concerned about this, but it was indeed a problem. Willow took the initiative to smooth things over, took the phone and spoke with her dad. I don't know what she said, but by the time I heard Manuel's voice again, the old man was laughing jubilantly as if he'd picked up money. During the days of waiting for the ransom to arrive, I was very tormented. On the one hand, I had to prevent Willow from running away. On the other, I was worried about the police suddenly coming to catch me. This was my first time kidnapping someone, so I was somewhat scared. Perhaps Willow noticed my nerves, twisted her head a bit and asked, What are you thinking about? I dropped my gaze. Do you know how many years people are sentenced for this kind of kidnapping? She paused, then slowly said, You won't get caught. I knew she was trying to reassure me because she was afraid I would get angry and harm her, so I didn't respond. There was a brief silence in the room. She tried to initiate a conversation, but why did you think of kidnapping me? I honestly answered, no money. She slowly shook her head. Why don't you find a more legitimate way? I rolled my eyes. Why don't you go to King Hua University? 
Is it because you don't want to? She paused, staring at my face intently. Ah, uh, I go to King Hua. I simply turned my head, not wanting to talk to her, seeing that I was ignoring her. She started to get restless again. I need to go to the bathroom. Hold it in. I'll get sick. What does that have to do with me? Then you won't get your money. I was scared and stood up from the stool, but I was also worried. What if you run away while using the bathroom? She raised her eyebrows. You can watch me. I don't mind. Watch her go to the bathroom. A. Hey, that's perverted. No thanks. After some deliberation, I finally untied her ropes and threatened. I'll kill you if you dare to run. She was quite obedient and didn't run. But shortly after returning from the bathroom, she started to make a fuss again. I want to take a shower. Don't take a bath. I'll get moldy. What does that have to do with me? Then you won't get your money. I was gritting my teeth. What kind of hostage taker am I? Really? This is killing me. Willow seemed to be holding back a laugh. If you're afraid I'll run, you can watch me. I was taken aback. Watch her take a shower. Hum. That doesn't seem too bad. I couldn't help but smile. Willow noticed the change in my expression. Her eyes widened in disbelief. You. Having spent a few days with Willow, I gradually let down my guard because I felt that she really had no intention of running away. There was even one time when I got up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, I heard her sleeping and laughing on the small couch. She seemed pretty comfortable, although life was quiet, the leftover food in the refrigerator was not. Looking at the last steamed bun left, I fell into deep thought. Willow noticed my prolonged silence and teeked her head out. What's wrong? I turned around and seriously explained to her, I've encountered a serious difficulty. She was a bit confused. Ha. Huh. I continued. We've run out of food. If I go out to buy things now, I face two risks. First, you might try to escape. Second, I might get caught by the police. Comparing the two, just as I was passionately summarizing my meticulous analysis, Willow timidly raised her hand and said, Actually, you can just order takeout. Silence was deafening at this moment. I scratched my head. Oh, right. Yeah. You order. Willow fiddled with her phone and ordered. Half an hour later, the small table was filled with a variety of calorie bombs. It's been a long time since I ate such a satisfying meal. The cupcakes I used to love so much tasted rather sweet instead of delicious when I took the first bite. I dared not eat too much and stop after consuming about a third or quarter. Willow frowned. You're full already. I nodded. Yeah, pretty much. I can't eat too much. I don't want to spoil my taste. Willow's hand paused midway, or reaching for something. She slowly turned to look at me, her eyes filled with emotions that I couldn't understand. She watched me quietly for a long time before forcing a relaxed tone. You've already kidnapped me, and now you have money. Stop compromising. I shook my head at her without saying anything more. I knew clearly in my heart that this money had a more important use and I couldn't waste it. In the evening, my brother David called me. You said you're working on getting the money, right? Where did you go? I explained. I'm working on it. I'll get there in more than 40 days. I lowered my voice and detailed the matter of kidnapping Willow to him. He was terrified. That's illegal. George, we might be poor but we still need to abide by the law. If you end up in jail, it would be quite embarrassing for me to visit you there. After a long talk, he added, by the way, remember to delete our call records. I don't know anything about you kidnapping people. The police shouldn't arrest me, right? I was a bit helpless. I'm actually quite scared too. But this girl Willow is really nice. She even told me that her dad won't call the police. David seemed to be enlightened and suddenly got excited. Are you talking about the rich second generation you kidnapped? This is valuable information. I'm telling you, take advantage of this time and get close to her. If you successfully woo her, you might avoid getting caught. I was shocked. What? Me? Woo Willow. That's not appropriate, right? David was excited. What's inappropriate about it? This is your only solution. I was a bit at a loss, but I trust David. All right. How should I do it? At what temperature of water? I was hurrying to ask advice when the bathroom door suddenly opened behind me. Willow, in her long legs, walked out. She was only wearing a bathrobe, and her hair was still wet, with droplets sliding down along her hair strands, streaming over her well-defined giant collarbone, finally falling into the bathrobe. She was drying her hair and asked uncertainly, I'm sorry, I think I heard you say, you want to soak me, I turned around in shock, almost dropping my phone, it's over, 
She found out even before I started implementing the so-called only solution. I hurriedly hung up the phone and waved frantically. No, 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 that's not my intention. I was waving so hard that I almost shook my hands into a blur in front of her. Willow looked at me with a smirk, sat down next to me, a half-surrounding posture. Her body's pleasant scent of shore gel enveloped me instantly. I felt a warm breath on my neck. It was her whispering in my ear, her voice almost enticing. You can have it. My head was dizzy, but I woke up immediately, heavily pushing away Willow. This scent of shower gel is not from my house. Where did she get this shower gel? Something's fishy. Willow was stunned by my sudden action. I hurriedly brought the rope to tie Willow up, but my wrist was firmly grabbed and I couldn't shake it off. I was shocked. What are you doing? Let go of me. Willow nodded obediently and let go of me. But because I had struggled too hard, I lost my balance and was about to fall backwards. Willow quickly and firmly pulled me steady. She lowered her gaze and stared at me smiling. Isn't it better when I'm holding you? My heart was pounding. It must be because I almost fell. I stepped back cautiously. What are you up to? Have you already contacted someone outside and are preparing to escape? She sighed. Why don't you ever trust me? Do you really think that if I wanted to run, I wouldn't have already? I looked Willow up and down. At a height of 175 centimeters, her body was thinner than mine, but all her muscles were well toned from regular exercise. And according to the news I later watched, it seemed she had won a provincial judo championship. Back then, I thought she was a 15-year-old kid which gave me the boldness to kidnap her. If I had known about her physique earlier, I wouldn't have dared to lay a hand on her even after three to five years of training. But despite her appearance, she really has been tied up by me for so long and has not resisted at all. Suddenly, a bold guess came to mind. I incredulously covered my mouth. Then you, you dot dot double quotes. Willow's eyes lit up and she nodded vigorously at me, encouraging me to continue speaking. I was so flabbergasted that my jaw dropped. Are you preparing to gather evidence of my crime? and then team up with the police to catch me. At that moment, Willow seemed petrified. She maintained a fixed posture and didn't move for a long time. In the air, there seemed to be the sound of shattered hope. Meanwhile, I started to hurriedly pack my stuff and prepare to run away. Just as I was sneakily heading towards the door with my little bundle, I was grabbed by the scruff and pulled back. Willow looked at me with an exasperated look. George, why don't you go and take a look at the bathroom first? I was about to cry. Would there be a bunch of police squatting in there, ready to tackle me to the ground once I walked in? At this moment, it seemed that I was the one being held hostage. I was scared not to check when I really entered the bathroom. I found that there were a lot of things on the originally empty floor. Shower gel, shampoo, facial cleanser, and what looked like high-grade tissues. I was a bit confused. Willow sighed in exasperation. I saw that your bathroom was barely equipped, so I got a few things while ordering food delivery. I remained vigilant. Why? She looked at me seriously. Because it will make your life more comfortable. I still did not understand. But I kidnapped you. She smiled. But I don't mind. Willow repeatedly assured me that she would not run away before I got the money. I was doubtful but couldn't say anything. After all, in terms of physical strength, she could run away and I'd be left staring. Under her spending power, my little home was quickly transformed. Not only were many new items added, but the sofa and bed were also replaced. I was lounging on my recliner munching an apple when it occurred to me. Willow, what about school? I've kidnapped you. She was watering my succulent plants and looked up when she heard me speak. It's summer vacation now. Oh, when do you start school again? Next month, I think. Do you like going school? It's all right. What is Tsinghe like? It's pretty. During our conversation, I fell asleep. When I opened my eyes again, Willow was crouching next to me, fanning me gently with a small fan. Seeing that I had woken up, she stood up and turned her back to me as if to hide something. I rubbed my eyes, still half asleep, but seeing her hurriedly grabbing a cloth to wipe the table, I remembered my dream. In the dream, the house was still run down, and I was still the me who ate biscuit every day. I suddenly felt a bit sentimental. Willow, when you go back home, will all this disappear? She froze, then said emphatically, no. Willow turned around and crouched down, pinching my face. If you like them, they will always be there. Bewildered, I blurted out. 
What about you? She was visibly taken aback, then laughed and patted me. I will also be there. Before the full amount of 500,000 had arrived, I received another call from David. George, we found a donor who matches grandpa's. He can have the surgery next week. I was pleasantly surprised. Really, that's great. David sounded a little worried, but we need to pay as soon as possible. Have you got the dot surgery fees? I confidently claimed. Don't worry about it. Just wait and see. After hanging out, I sat silently by the bedside for a long time before getting up and going out to nudge Willow, who was sleeping on the sofa. She was sleeping deeply and didn't react at all. The moonlight shone on her face, spreading a soft glow. I could only prod her again. Dot dot, she mumbled and reached out to grab me, pulling me onto the sofa and flipping over, dragging me into a spooning position. She was bare from the waist up, and my face was almost touching her chest. I was held tightly by her and having some difficulty breathing, so I had to stick my head out with difficulty. Willow. She reached out and patted the back of my head. Making a hum from her nose, I pushed at her. Could you, can you let go first? She seemed to disapprove of my pushing, extending her arm to hug me even tighter. This kid, she's really not the type who stays quiet when they sleep if she wakes up in this position. I think it would be rather awkward. So, I didn't dare to struggle too much. While carefully prying her arm away, I seemed to hear her murmuring. Brother George, Willow, although a deep sleeper, woke up quite early. As soon as she opened her eyes, I, after mulling over it all night, directly said to her, Willow, I can let you go, she seemed not fully awake yet, ha. Huh? I didn't have the patience to wait for her to wake up completely, so continued, I need 500,000 now, the rest can be paid in cash, once I get the money you can leave. She remained in the position of about to get up but not quite, not saying anything. I was afraid she didn't understand. Did I make myself clear? She then slowly nodded her head. Hum. I turned around to leave, but then heard a low voice behind me. Did I do something to upset you? I was puzzled. Ha. Huh. Willow carefully propped herself up from the sofa, her eyes melancholic. Why dot why do you want me to leave all of a sudden? Her expression was really pitiful. But I didn't understand why she was acting this way. She was a hostage. Leaving the kidnapper. Isn't that what she needs, so I didn't think too much. I answered honestly, because I need money. As I turned to leave, I seemed to see the last glimmer of light in Willow's eyes fade. Manuel didn't call the police indeed. I safely picked up a box full of cash from the agreed place and then rushed to the hospital. I did not tie Willow up, presumably she would leave on her own. When I arrived, David was taking care of Grandpa. Upon hearing that I had already paid the surgical fees, Grandpa was so agitated that he almost sat up from his hospital bed. George, you've used all your savings on my treatment, where did you get so much money? I held his thin, bony hand. Grandpa, I found a job that doesn't require a degree, and the boss, a nice guy, lent it to me. Grandpa finally sighed with relief, but then became misty-eyed again. It's all my fault, I'm a burden to you all, it would be better if I die. David and I said, in unison, Grandpa, don't say things like that. He's the best Grandpa. He must live a long and healthy life. I lost my mother when I was born. My father was a gambler and never properly took care of me for even a single day. Sometimes, I even had to beg for food. Dot When I was 11, he owed a lot of money, and the debt collectors accidentally killed him during a confrontation. Grandpa then took me in. He painstakingly brought me old textbooks from the junkyard. And that was when I started reading. Dot dot he tried his best to give me everything he could. Even though he himself was just a small old man who collected scraps. He always said that George was the most precious little bow, deserving of all the beauty in the world. But I think he is the one who is. Later, when he got sick, he needed a continuous flow of money for treatment. I worked three part time jobs every day saving all the money I could for his treatment. But as time went on, he became increasingly worn down. Until the doctor said, he advised not to go on like this, suggesting to do the surgery directly. The surgical fees became the biggest problem, I thought, regardless of the consequence to me. As long as my dear old man could finally be free of pain, that would be the end I desired. After Grandpa had the surgery, he gradually got better, insisting on going back to his little waste paper business, saying that he wants to earn money for me and David to get married. 
I quit my part-time job and started looking for a stable one. By chance, I came upon an old man lying in the middle of the row, groaning. There was no one around and no security cameras. I hesitated for a long time before taking a few steps towards him. Sir, I only have $20 to my name. Can I help you up? The old man squinted at me. I hurriedly pulled out my crumpled $20 bill. He puckered his lips, moved to the side, and said, Kate, come and lie down with me. My mind twitched and I obediently lay down. The place where the old man was lying was a bit remote, but it seemed like there was a villa area nearby. Not long after, I saw a Bentley drive by. Seeing the car approach, I was too embarrassed to stay and got up. The Bentley, however, drove past me and then slowly reversed back to me. The window rolled down to reveal a face that was strange yet familiar. It was Willow. She was wearing sunglasses and her hair was neatly arranged, with her bangs pinned back. Exuding youthful exuberance, I was finished. She came to catch me. My vision blacked out, and I, who was already unsteady, fell back down. Upon seeing this, the old man stands up with his sleeves rolled up, jabbering in dialect. Hey, how do you drive, young man? She's a fine girl. Why did she fall down like that? While speaking, he didn't forget to give me a thumbs up. Kid, your acting skills are self-taught. I admire you. Would you believe me if I told you that I wasn't acting? Willow quickly got out of the car and squatted down next to me, reaching out to touch my forehead. What happened? I twitched the corner of my mouth, not daring to open my eyes. The old man was quite excited. You dared to ask what happened. With such a big car, you hit him and made him faint. Perhaps Willow was frightened by the old man's words. Without saying a word, she ordered the driver to pick me up and put me in the car. The old man grabbed her to stop her from leaving. Hey, what are you doing? Are you trying to hide a body? I'm still alive. Willow impatiently dropped the sentence. Stop making noise. We are going to the hospital. It was the first time I heard her speak in such a tone, a bit fierce. Willow held me in the back seat of the car with no intention of letting go and ordered the driver, faster, drive faster. She resembled an uninhibited female tycoon. The driver sped all the way, and I felt like throwing up the little food I had eaten. Unable to hold back, I weakly opened my eyes. Oh, I feel dizzy. Willow looked anxious but still held me tightly. What's wrong with you? Are you sick? I coughed pretentiously a few times. Ahem, I might have had a heat stroke. It's really cool in here. I feel better as soon as I got in. She then breathed a sigh of relief, that's good. I smiled awkwardly. After a short silence, the driver timidly asked, Miss, where should we go now? She glanced at me, go home. I was taken aback, Oh, You still want to turn me over to your father and throw me into prison? She nodded, yes. I started nervously fumbling for the window and the door handle. Even though I knew I deserved all this, I couldn't help but feel sad. Would David not visit me in prison because he would feel embarrassed? How will I explain this to Grandpa? I silently fiddled with Willow's leather seat. The thought of my future days in the station made me feel down. Willow couldn't help but laugh. Are you dumb? She asked. I felt as if I'd been insulted. Ha! Huh? She tapped my forehead. You dared to go. I wouldn't bear to let you. I touched my forehead where she'd hit and felt hopeful. Really? She opened her hands generous. Her whole body relaxed. I've got a job for you, 12000 a month, after tax, with room and board. I could hardly believe my ears. What? She gave a mysterious smile. Have you ever heard of a dot gardener? I never expected Willow to actually offer me a job. The main role was to water the flowers and plants in their garden and feed the birds occasionally. I was astonished. The world of the rich truly is unimaginable. A job of this intensity. Yet the monthly salary could reach 10000 The one in charge of the interview was a beautiful woman. If it weren't for the fact that Willow called her mom, I'd have thought she was her sister at most. The lady saw me and her face lit up with a smile. You must be George. How old are you? You're so handsome. I smiled warmly. I just turned 18 this year. The lady covered her mouth in surprise. How can you be so young? Willow also frowned, as if it were unbelievable. I shyly hung my head. Actually, I understated my age by five years. The lady laughed at my joke. She said she appreciated frank people like me and approved my employment on the spot. 
They cleaned up a room for me in their house, which was larger than my entire old house. Every day, I'd water the flowers, play cards with auntie, eat three meals, and even pack up leftovers to bring back to grandpa on weekends. I often felt as though I was living a lie, as if I wasn't working, but enjoying life. Willow's mom said not to treat her like a boss, but to call her Sister HUA. Every time Sister HUA went out, she would bring back little gifts for me. Sometimes it's a small cake, sometimes it's a piece of clothing. She looked forward to the surprised expressions I'd make when I received these gifts, as if I were her precious son. One evening, I was playing cards with Sister HUA as usual. The lights in the card room suddenly went out. I was used to power outages and wasn't afraid. I quickly used intuition to feel my way to Sister HUA and comforted her. Sister HUA, don't be scared. It's probably just a blackout. Sister HUA also tightly held my hand. I'm not scared. Let's go outside and check. All right. I turned on the flashlight on my phone, ready to lead Sister HUA out. But Sister HUA turned off the flashlight. That light could hurt people's eyes. I'll lead the way, although I found it strange. I didn't think much about it, because Sister HUA is a trustworthy person. She knew the layout of the house better. She led me through numerous twists and turns, and we arrived at an unfamiliar room. It was completely dark in front of us, as if we were in a massive black hole. Suddenly, without warning, Sister HUA let go of my hand. For a moment, I was a bit panicked, calling out repeatedly Sister HUA. Sister HUA, but there was no response. Sister HUA had disappeared. I tried to steady my breathing and tried to find the direction we came from. The rhythmic sound of footsteps came from behind me. There was also the sound of metal slowly rolling on the floor. A cold sweat broke out on my forehead. Just when my heart was racing, I saw a glimmer of light on the floor. The melodious and cheerful sound of a song followed. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Willow pushed a little cart with a cake on it. Laughing as she walked towards me. Dot dot sister HUA and Manuel followed behind her, clapping. There were even a few ants at the back making up the numbers, holding small signs to create an atmosphere. I was a bit stunned, you all. Willow had already walked up to me, bent over to put a birthday hat on me, and whispered in my ear, Happy birthday, brother George. The laughter in her eyes was shallow and sweet, like a spring of sweet water. My mind was still struggling to understand what was happening, and my eyes were already filled with tears. I hastily wiped my eyes. How? How did you guys know it's my birthday? Even I was about to forget this day, yet they remembered it so attentively, with a resigned sigh. Willow said, My dear brother George, how could you be so forgetful? At Willow's reminder, I finally remembered. Right after my dad was killed, I was living alone. Once, when I was out collecting bottles, I ran into a stumbling little girl. She said she was kidnapped by human traffickers and barely managed to escape. Seeing that she looked like she was going to be wronged, I decided to take her home and take care of her for a while. During that time, we took turns collecting bottles and selling newspapers. Although life was hard, we were happy. When her parents came to take her back, they left me a considerable amount of money but it was soon robbed by another group of debt collectors. My grandpa couldn't stand it, so he moved in with me. I saw my life after being adopted as a new one, so I gradually forgot about my experiences before the age of 11. I found it unbelievable, but how did you know it was me? Willow snorted, there's a small mole on the back of your neck. Also, how could I not recognize you? Sister HUA excitedly grabbed my hand, George, I never thought the money we left you would have been stolen. That's too outrageous. If I had known this, I would have taken you home with me right away. Manuel also heartily shook my hand. Yes. And then when Willow went back later to find you, you weren't there anymore. She cried at home for several months and didn't recover. Willow tugged at her father's clothes, a little embarrassed. Dad, don't mention that. The light from the birthday candles illuminated her face. Even though it was not clear, I could still see that her cheeks were slightly red. Willow turned her head away, not daring to look at me. Brother George, make a wish and blow out the candles. Sister HUA and Brother Manuel both looked at me expectantly. I nodded, closed my eyes. I wished for my grandfather to live a long life. I hoped for my own happiness. I wished for Willow and her family, 
to be forever happy. After blowing out the candles, the lights in the room turned on. Only then did I see that the walls of the room were covered in balloons, with a happy birthday in the middle. There were also some little star lights, clearly prepared with a lot of thought. Sister HUA excitedly introduced me. All these balloons were put up by Willow one by one. We wanted to help but she wouldn't let us. Manuel agreed, yeah, this silly girl insisted on preparing it herself, I've never seen her so serious. Willow's ears turned burning red. Mom, Dad, can you please stop talking about me? Today is not my birthday. Sister HUA clapped her hands, oh, right? George, quick, cut the cake, the birthday cake. I looked down at the cake in front of me. There was broken chocolate piled around the edges, surrounding a cute doll in the middle. Beside it, Happy Birthday George was written in jam. In the past, my father never cared about my birthday. After my grandfather came, I was worried about him spending money and deliberately said that I hated celebrating birthdays. A scene like today has only appeared in my dreams. You guys have been really too kind to me. Sister HUA came over and put her arm around me. What are you talking about? You're my daughter's savior. Without you, she might have been sold as slave labor. When she said this, I couldn't control my sobbing voice and started crying hysterically. I'm sorry, Sister HUA. There's actually something I've been keeping from you. The person who kidnapped Willow before was me. I've done such a disgusting thing and still want to deceive you. I'm simply unforgivable. Tomorrow I will go and surrender myself to the police. Sister HUA was stunned, kidnapped. What kidnapping? Manuel looked con and in control. Willow frowned and said to me seriously, Brother, you can't blame yourself for something you didn't do. I sniffed and asked in a muffled tone, Ha, huh, I didn't. Willow helped me sit down and began to explain patiently. Firstly, we know that in criminal actions, there are objective elements and subjective elements. I looked up and asked, Ha. Huh? She held a finger up. In the crime of kidnapping, the objective element involves the use of violent or coercive means to restrict a person's freedom. I really couldn't understand what she was saying. But it seemed like she knew what she was talking about. In our interactions, you didn't meet this criterion. I countered, How could I not? I really did tie you up. Willow clasped her hands together, her expression serious. Because I chose to go with you, everything was my own choice. In other words, it wasn't you who restricted my freedom, but I voluntarily stayed with you for a while. I still couldn't accept it. What about the money I took from your dad? Doesn't that count as extortion? Willow shook her head at me again. No, I wanted to give you the money. I felt like there was something wrong, but I couldn't exactly pinpoint what it was. So what do you call this behavior of mine? Willow smirked, deliberately pausing for two seconds, then chuckling, called interest. After Willow's brainwashing, I gradually became convinced that to make my position clear, every morning, I would recite the eight honors and eight shamas in front of my house and emphatically say, I want to be a patriotic, law-abiding, honest and hard-working citizen. By the fourth day, Sister HUA opened the curtain with a weary face. George, we get it. It's okay, you can stop reciting. I knew she felt pity for me and didn't want me to keep torturing myself. But I had to deeply recognize my own mistakes. Sister HUA helplessly went back to her room. In the afternoon, Sister Hua's friend came over for tea and brought a beautiful and fair-skinned lady. Sister Hua's friend was called Sister Du. As soon as Sister Du saw me, her eyes lit up. Who is this handsome young man? How come I've never seen him before? Sister HUA looked smug. Isn't he handsome? He's my adopted son, who had been separated from us and has just been recently found. Sister Du kept nodding. Adopted son? Not bad, not bad. Then she turned to her beautiful daughter and said, Anna, go and chat with your brother. Get to know him. The beautiful lady named Anna was a bit stunned and nodded blankly. She seemed to be about the same height as Willa. Anna was a bit introverted. She pulled out her phone and took a long while before she finally asked, Can I add you on WeChat? Just as I was going to pull out my phone, Willow, who appeared from nowhere, dragged me away angrily. She didn't even turn around when Sister HUA called her. She dragged me all the way upstairs and back to the room. I was walking so fast that I wasn't careful and fell flat on my face. Seeing me in pain, she quickly helped me up and asked, Did you get hurt? 
I nodded dot dot she sighed slightly, gently rubbed my knee and said, I'm sorry. I was in a hurry just now, I blinked. What were you in a hurry for? She continued rubbing my knee lightly, with a rond expression. Don't you know, I was rond. I asked blankly. No what? Willa looked into my eyes, what were you just doing with that girl? I answered honestly, adding her on WeChat. Willow paused for two seconds, as if she was waiting for me to add something, but she didn't hear anything. Therefore, she looked a little anxious, after that. After you added her on WeChat, aren't you going to chat every day, say good morning and good night? Then it turns into dependency, you stick together every day, and eventually fall for each other. I was startled by her inexplicable inference. Huh? What are you talking about? Willow's eyes were slightly reddened. You still want to hide from me, Dak then. You would hold me to sleep every night. Do you want to take responsibility now? I was even more shocked. Oh no no no, you can't just say that. We were just kids. Willow pursed her lips, looking wronged. So in your heart, does everything that happened between us as kids not count? I was stunned. She sounded like she was about to cry. Brother, you can't do this. I've tried to find you many times before but there was no trace. Sometimes, when I think about it, I get so upset thinking that you might have had your own life somewhere. The moment I recognized you, do you know how happy I was? I was so thrilled that even if you had to sell me, I wouldn't say a word. Then I found out you had been having a tough time over the years. My heart ached. I wanted to make up for everything you had missed. I, even as slow as I was, I gradually began to understand what she meant. I struggled to raise my head. So, you. She also looked down, meeting my gaze, her tone serious. Yes, I like you. Brother, I like you. Can you, please, not look at anyone else? David said that if you want to know if you really like someone, imagine what it would be like if she were with someone else and if it would upset you. I thought about it. I think it would make me unhappy. Grandpa said that if you want to gauge how much you like someone, Imagine what it would be like to lose her and how much you would miss her. I seemed to have really missed Willow when we were in that old shack. I looked at her strikingly beautiful eyes, as if there was some kind of magic that gradually seduces people to get lost in them. I gently nodded, okay. 18. I never dared to tell Sister HUA and Brother Manuel about Willow and me. I always felt that Willow and I were like a flower stuck in cow dung. She was the flower. Willow vehemently disagreed with my thinking, brother, what is your clever little brain thinking about all day? Clearly, you are the flower. I shook my head. No. I am the cow dung. What's that? I am. Okay. I am. I am. I'm cow dung. I'm cow dung. While we were arguing about this, Sister HUA appeared. She looked at us bewilderedly. Have you taken the wrong medicine? Willow was indignant. Mom, judge between us. Since I've been with my brother, he insists that I am a flower and he's cow dung. Is that fair? I wasn't willing to lose either. That's the way it is. I am right. Five seconds later, under sister was shocked gaze, I finally realized that something was wrong. She looked at me. Then at Willow, with wide eyes, you guys. I pretended to watch a flying saucer. Willow guiltily picked at her hand, but sister HUA was very happy. Not bad. Not bad. My daughter has potential. Previously, Sister Du wanted me to matchmake George and her daughter. Ha ha. She didn't expect this. My daughter got there first. Willow and I looked at each other, both sighing in relief. Not only did Sister HUA and Brother Manuel support us, they also said they would sponsor us to go on a honeymoon. I was surprised. Isn't honeymooning something you do after getting married? Willow started feeling wronged again without a word. So... Brother, you never thought about marrying me. All right, just in time for Willow's graduation. A graduation trip is also great. As for getting married, it would be at least two more years. At least for now, we have to be happy. Willow and I traveled to many places according to Sister Hwa's wish. Each time we reach a new place, I would send local specialties and some photos to my grandfather. Grandfather was very happy and would call me whenever he had time. On the last night of the trip, he said to me, George, you have finally found your happiness. Looking at the person sleeping soundly next to me, warmth overflow in my heart. Yes, it turns out, I can also find my happiness.